Hey, deserving listeners, Natalia Grace, the documentary on Max. Let's watch. The deliberation process, 100% of the jurors, 100%, definitely believed that Michael Barnett was, was guilty of abandoning her. But because the judge was very, very clear on what we had to follow, people were just like, ah, oh, we have to go not guilty. Ah, oh, and that was the... Okay, so this is great. We're hearing from one of the jurors, and she's saying that everyone, all of us knew that he was guilty, but because of the law and what we're being asked to rule on, we have to rule not guilty. We're not saying he's innocent, but we have to say that the prosecution didn't demonstrate without a reasonable doubt that the defendant actually did these things. That says something, right? I'm glad to hear that because if the juror said the whole prosecution was ridiculous, there was no evidence, they were just going after him for no reason. Because, you know, when you're a juror, uh, you don't, you, you have no distractions, you have no phone, there's no computer, you're just, you're just staring and listening to all the, all the witnesses and hearing all the accounts. You know, it says something that at least what she's saying is all the other jury, all the other jurors agreed. Now it's her story. This is pretty edited. You know, it's edited a lot. They, they, they're chopping things up. So I hope that they're not misrepresenting what she was basically saying. But so she's saying that they all believe that he was guilty of neglect. I think meaning, yeah, you should have been there to help her or housed her, right? That's not okay. Just think about the tragedy if all this is true for Natalia. Just abandonment. Oh, we also saw a, an interview with the biological mother. The biological mother said that when she gave birth to Natalia in 2003 or 2004, it was a very difficult birth. And then the doctor came to her and said, you shouldn't bring Natalia home with you because there's a lot of medical problems. And you also owe us $100,000 for the birth. And you don't have much money at all. I think she's a single parent at this point. I'm not sure. And you already have a child at home, another daughter. So you you shouldn't take this child home with you. And then she uh, said okay and left because she couldn't afford to pay the bill. And she's being advised that she needs to do this and it'll be the financial ruin of her and her family. And she's got to think about her other kid. And then later she had another kid who she still has, it sounded like, or that she raised herself. She was crying about the loss of Natalia, but it's hard to know because someone in that position could spin the tail a little bit to exonerate herself, make herself look better. But that is more likely the case. It's not common that people will um, you know, even if the child has a disability, it, it's really rare that a parent will just say, yeah, I, I don't want the kid. It, 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 that's a very difficult thing to do and or it takes a very particular kind of person. And those things are they're just not common. They happen. You know, you hear that you hear the stories. But what you don't hear in the news are all the millions of other stories in which that doesn't happen. You know, you hear this, the times when it does. So. You know, it, it does happen. And I, I, for a time, reviewed a fair amount of literature on phenomena that are associated with this, uh, you know, abandoning a child soon after birth. You know, you hear the stories about, you know, I won't go, to, go into detail, you've heard the stories. So the way that it was being told kind of by the twin sister was that the biological mom just discarded the kid. But, you know, you can imagine there being some bad blood between them. It seemed like there was, so it could be spun in a certain way. Um, so it's hard to know. But it is possible that the biological mom had a... Regardless, the child, Natalia, was abandoned. Well, abandoned, <laughs> taken in some ways from the mom. And then apparently another family was tasked with raising Natalia. Was this like a foster home or an actual loving adoptive home? I mean, you can have loving foster parents too, but it's a different kind of relationship with a foster parent, uh, meaning that foster parents, at least typically, they don't invest that much, as much emotional energy because they expect to only have the child for a temporary period of time. Now, sometimes 
foster parents can be extremely loving, uh, even more loving than many adoptive parents. So I don't know. But then we hear from the twin that that, you know, anyway. So it's just heartbreaking. I think, you know, all that pain and agony and trauma. And of course, if we also believe the accounts of her behavior, you see results of that trauma. Then she gets to this family in New Hampshire. They are trying to pawn her off, trying to get money for her. And then she finds this family in Indiana with Michael and, and Christine. And pretty quickly, I'm imagining Christine is doing her abusive thing, if we believe those accounts. And either Michael is going along with the abuse or he's being abusive himself. I don't know. The older brothers are being tasked with abusing Natalia as well. I mean, it's just horrific. Natalia presents her own problematic behaviors that don't help, right? She might have been that way anyway. Uh, you know, just imagine, you're just like, I'm 13, and your adoptive mom is you know, just grilling you. And I, yeah, I guess that does paint that picture differently too, that the account, I think even Jacob said this, but definitely Michael did, that the mom, Christine, was just adamant about Tell me who you are, you know, tell me, tell me who you really are, how you, how old you really are. Seemingly, be, um, possibly, I guess, because Christine at that point was determined to get rid of her and knew that she couldn't unless she had some technicality, some way out of it. And one of the technicalities she could use is, well, she's actually an adult. And so she was trying to get her to say something so she could find something out. Maybe Christine legit believed she was an adult or she just was trying to manufacture it. I don't know. Then, you know, it's all the the wall and the and the abuse and the urine in the bed and the countless other things. Those are just tip of the iceberg things, I'm sure, I'm guessing. Then she gets put in an apartment and left alone. The parents just drop off food every once in a while. And she's lonely and she's trying to, for the first time in her life, trying to socialize with a bunch of randos and she has seemingly reactive attachment indiscriminate attachment so she's just like wandering into homes because developmentally she could be like a two-year-old and if you had a two-year-old who was just left in a neighborhood that's it wouldn't be unusual for a two-year-old to do right just like well i guess i'll just wander into this house hopefully someone will take care of me that creeps everyone out she also there's reports of her having tendencies to want to sexually abuse uh, younger boys evidence that she was sexually abused. You ask, particularly children who will perpetrate sexual abuse on other children, you know, my co-host Umberto will talk about how when he was sexually abused when he was five, extensively by his 13-year-old female babysitter, you know, a number of incidents. And then he tells stories about how afterwards, a year later, a couple years later, he would not fully perpetrate on other people, but he would do things thinking, well, that's what you do. You know, he would just reach down someone's pants as a way to try to connect because that's what was being shown to him. And he, at no point during the decision process to do those things, was he thinking, ha ha ha, I'm going to get these people. It was just like an urge, just, uh, uh, it's just like, well, isn't this what you're supposed to do? And so that manifested over a, a lot of years. And um, so she might have been doing so if, if she's a child, right? Now, children can perpetrate and knowingly perpetrate. There are sadistic, I've worked with them. Oof, the, the extreme ones are, are particular. Not common, but they often do have extensive abandonment and tra trauma histories. So who knows what's going on there? But it's hard to hold a 13-year-old accountable, like fully accountable, for those kinds of behaviors when they've been through all that, right? And then she's kind of gaslit or brainwashed into telling everyone that she wants to kill people and that pushes people away. Then the parents really kind of turn on her. You know, there's those videos of the dad going over to the house and filming her while they're talking, either because Christine told him to do that or because he's just against her or he's recording because he wants to get evidence in case there are charges brought up, you know, and it's just heartbreaking. It's, it's heartbreaking. And then she is genuinely abandoned and neglected yet again. Years later, they go to court and based on a technicality, 
the justice system finds the parents are not guilty. Now we haven't heard Christine. I, 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 is there a trial? I, I plan on looking it up. If I'm, I'm assuming we're going to hear about it. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's a new year, so of course it's time for New Year's resolutions. But often those are just manifestations of internalized harmful voices, voices that tell us we're not good enough. So instead of making a resolution to change something, let's recognize that we are already good enough. Now, most people think of therapy as a place for us to work on our problems, but there are several schools of thought within the field of psychotherapy that adamantly reject that paradigm, like narrative therapy and solution-focused. Instead, these clinicians help us focus on what we're already doing well. And by helping us do that, data shows that we often will gravitate towards more beneficial patterns. Well, one place you can find such therapists is on BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, it's definitely worth giving a try. So celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash Kirk today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Kirk. Um, that seems like a huge miscarriage of justice. We felt that Michael Barnett had really gotten away with abandoning and, and neglecting his child. And none of us felt good about that. And to me, the solution isn't to go after these, I mean, in this case, maybe go after the parents. But if we actually want justice, if we actually want to reduce the risk of this happening in the future, there is a solution to actually fixing problems like this. If 10 years ago or 15 years ago in Indiana, the legislatures in Indiana, if they had allocated funds or raised levy taxes or raised property taxes or something to pay for a very strong program to have these kinds of services that not only would be for these kinds of families, but all sorts of families, then in my opinion, this situation might not have ever happened. It might have been in this direction, you know, divorce might have happened. There might have been some parenting problems for sure. Uh, Natalia might have still had some behavior problems, but the the end of the story would be so much different. Um, I, you know, I've seen that before. And just think about that, that we can fix this. You know, that's what I think if when aliens come to Earth, if they're not already flying around in an invisible spaceship in the sky and looking down on us, they're in my fantasy world, they're wondering this question. Why are you doing this to yourself? You have experts that are telling you how to fix these problems, but you don't do what the experts say. You just yell at the television, at a documentary, and then you move on with your life. Do you care or do you not care? Do people care about each other? They act like they care, and I think they do care, but why don't they take action in line, in line with that caring? You know, if someone falls down, your neighbor falls down, they're carrying groceries, you go over there and you help them, or you at least care to, you ask them, and you know, you're a human being, you feel bad. It's, it's easy, it's linear, it's, it's something you can do. Your child is crying, uh, you go to them, right? It's just, it's, it's easy. But when it comes to systems and taxes and politics and pundits and power structure and corporations and special interest, we're lost. <laughs> The, the prosecutor then decided right then and there to let me know that she has now subpoenaed me to testify against your mommy. <laughs> okay, well, I was wondering about that. I, I was wondering if they were doing the trial at the same time. It didn't sound like it. So it sounds like there's, a, there's another trial. Took my breath away. You don't have to feel bad. He said, even if you kissed her, I need to know, but you're not going to get in trouble, I think is what he said. And I said, no, I've never... Okay, so they're going back to the fella who purportedly had an affair with Christine, you know, the the Facebook messages and the member size conversation. And now he's saying that the police were asking him if he got together with Natalia. And the investigator's saying, look, even if you kissed Natalia, it's no big deal. You're not going to be prosecuted. And he's saying no. Been intimate with a little person ever. In my entire life, I know that. So now I know that I never, that this is not somebody I met and forgot about. And I had met Christine and Jacob when I was on the road. I don't know how the officer, the detective got my name, 
other than maybe uh, he saw on the message where uh, Christine tried to set me up. Okay, so now we're seeing, and I think we can believe these texts that Christine was texting Freddie, that guy, I want to fix you up on a night out with Natalia. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. wow. So what is this? Uh, August 2012. So she would have been nine or eight years old. This is before she even moved into an apartment, right? But that was the year that the judge had determined that she was 22 and not eight or nine at the time. But still, even if we believe that Christine thought that Natalia was 22, do we think that Christine would, as a mother, try to be tender for her own daughter? I don't know. Or I guess the way that people I think would interpret this, which might be the top hypothesis, is that, well, what would be the motivation? Because if, if we don't think that Christine was trying to help Natalia, you know, because it's just hard to imagine this being in a mother's head, but, well, I want my adult daughter to have a good time, so I'm going to look, because I think she reached out to him. She reached out to Freddie. Christine reached out to Freddie. So we don't believe that. Then was she trying to get Natalia abused? Like that was the intent? She's that psychopathic? Yeah, I've seen that before. Or Christine wanted to take part in it? I've seen that before too. Or she was trying to set Natalia up you know, as evidence of like, look, she's an adult. Look what she's doing or something like that. I don't know, but my goodness, what are we seeing? I mean, the, the details of this story are, they, in a few years, they need to make a whole other longer documentary and gather more information because every one of these details is like, what? Okay, so I took a break and visited with my wife and I got her watching this thing. <laughs> And we just, every time we see each other, it's like, did you see that? Oh, my God, like that thing. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is – and this is season one because I think there's still more to the story. So I guess we'll get a season two. With her. But I didn't take the bait. No reply from me. I just am like, ugh. You give me shivers to think that anybody would even remotely do that. I don't go there, and I – think that people that do go there need to have their balls chopped off. It just really is disgusting. Okay, now it raises this question. I hate to do this, but is there some evidence that Freddie was into that sort of thing or wanted to, or did do that sort of thing? Because uh, 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 it seems weird that a mother would just randomly go, I don't know, I mean, something is seriously wrong. I don't know what is wrong, but something is seriously wrong. <sighs> she tried to set Natalia up with Freddie Gill. There's something else that Freddie told us, Michael, that's a very serious accusation about you. I think it's our obligation to show you this. Okay, so apparently they informed him that... There were texts saying that she and Freddie uh, confirmed this, that Christine was trying to set Natalia up with Freddie Gill when when she was, when Natalia would have been eight or something. Uh, um, and he seems flabbergasted by that. Maybe he knew, maybe he didn't, I don't know. And now they're about to tell him something about allegations against, is this when we're going to hear, because we saw that, I can't remember what it was, but some reference to how Natalia would proposition him or something. I, 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 I'm not gonna pay attention. I truly don't care. I gotta be honest. My thoughts on it is I'm appreciative. And now I'm thinking, so the sexual abuse that is possibly there for Natalia, given the behaviors we saw when she was living in the apartment, did it not happen when she was prior to being in their house? Did it happen when they were in the house? Did something happen? Who knows? It's obviously a possibility. And was that 
text from Christine, evidence of what was going on there that the, because golly, oh, it's just, it's just too much to imagine. But did Christine, was this a pattern? Was she uh, 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 sex trafficking her own adopted daughter? I mean, my God, no, it's just, let's not. Uh, Dean told me in a series of messages, Natalia ruined her life in so many ways. Christine basically said that Natalia started. No. Guys, mic's off. Look, I don't want to talk about this part at. Okay, well, they didn't show us. I don't know why they didn't show us. Uh, it sounded like they're heading in a direction like what I was suspecting, but that's just speculation. All. When I testify in the trial of Christine Barnett, I'm going to be doing the right thing, telling the truth. I guess I'll see you guys in court. So we're at the end of the episode, so I guess this is a teaser for season two. So we don't know what he was going to say. It could be what I was speculating. It might not be. And even if it was stated by him, it's just something that Christine said. And given everything else we heard about Christine, can we believe something that Christine would say? As Christine apparently is trying to set Freddie up with, with Natalia. And even if she knew, thought that Natalia was an adult, it's, it's, there's a lot of questions there. And so oh, it's just hard to know. Or... Is it, is it pointing in a legitimate direction? Is there other evidence that Michael was abusing her, was abusing Natalia? You know, it, it's, it's possible. You know, it's not unheard of, of course. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't think we're gonna find out. So I guess we'll just have to wait. Oh, uh, season two is already out. Apparently, <laughs> Boy, I got a lot to watch. Okay, well, it's uh, almost midnight, so I should wrap it up. Tune in next time when I watch season two. Wow. I guess, curiosity-wise, that feels better to know that there's more information because there's a lot of question marks. But uh, I'm terrified of what we're going to learn. Until then... I watch and you know, tune in next time when I watch if you care to. And until then, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.